Hello, my friends of Tri-Cities Community Television. Welcome to my program, Mosaic. Judith Castillo and is welcome. Miran, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you very much for inviting me. My friends, uh, it's really interesting to know what our friends that are immigrants from Iran are doing right now here in Canada for them, their family, and their country. Welcome to our program, um, Iran. Uh, it's so important that people know what is happening and how we can support Iran, and especially with your experience being a, a woman that immigrated from Iran, and um, what does that mean for you? And now that you've been living here in Canada, and this is your second home. Yes. Um, so thank you very much again for inviting me. I'm really uh, thankful and appreciate this opportunity to talk about my what's going on in my home country right now and why I was actually came to this country at the first place. So obviously, so there are lots of stuff going on right now with the 43 years of this new Islamic regime. It's not a new anymore, why I say new, uh, then I took over after the revolution in 1979 in Iran. So um, I was a teenager, young, you know, 12, 13 years old when all that happened. But however, when the new government took power, so they started to take freedom from people. And the first people that they actually put lots of um, pressure was women. And, uh, and the first things they did, they said that this is an Islamic country, is going to be an Islamic country, and all women need to cover their hair and from head to toe. That was the initial um, attempt for this new government at the time to basically suppress the women in Iran. And uh, obviously, so over the last 43 years, there were lots of pushback and there were lots of uh, fighting from the women in Iran uh, for their freedom, for their equality, for every single thing that probably a man have the right, women do not have that right in Iran. So me as a young person who was involved, not directly in the revolution, but kind of after the revolution noticed that no like we really need to fight back and i became a activist i became a kind of a voice of women there and as a result of this um, i uh, been actually arrested i was in prison for uh, two years just because of i was speaking out and i wanted to have a freedom not just for women for everybody like a equality like the freedom for every single person in iran for for children for men for women but then again as a woman uh, unfortunately so that what happened then 43 years ago but then uh, and uh, I think about like about 32 years ago, I left the country because after I uh, released from prison and uh, my husband then uh, had also five years spent in prison. So when we released, we had no choice because there were like so much pressure on us. I, we left the country. We actually became a refugee in a second country, Turkey, through the United Nations. Uh, Canada was one of the countries and the one major country, at least at the time, to bring and accept refugees into this beautiful country. So uh, I was very fortunate to, uh, we were fortunate to got accepted uh, by Canada and we immigrated here. Uh, so of course this circumstance right now bring a lot of memories from your own experience and being in, in jail, mm -hmm. being able to, to to fight for freedom in the way that you want it. Now, living here and with these circumstances there, mm -hmm. how we can support that freedom for the one that you were mm -hmm. suffering in your country and now you are here? Yeah, so um, yes, it brings back lots of memories because I always, when I talk about my story and what happened, I'm like a one of millions of people there and probably one of million people who left Iran because of all this happening because then you become kind of a your life is in danger so it's not like just okay I'm just staying there uh, everything is going to be all right at that time we have to leave the country 
and um, but again I, um, I all my life I I always again tell that so I am a survivor because I I went through two wars there I went to prison I've been tortured I do you know I left the country because of I couldn't stay there however so this uh, fighting never stopped in Iran like I mean for the last 43 years women in Iran specifically they fight back they wanted to have their freedom so the government wanted to make us like women to cover from head to toe our you know like not even showing our face but women didn't tolerate that and also it's supported also but men is not all women but at this point so uh, about uh, seven weeks ago so there was this girl who been arrested because she was just showing some of the hair and this is a life of all the young uh, or old women in Iran but obviously the young women the students the you know they are right now in a society of they are in the social media they have they know what's going on in the west there no one's going on around the world and why as a woman there i have to be arrested just because i'll show like a little bit of my hair and this poor girl named masa amini so again it was not like the first time but then she started off like a major basically explosion in Iran to now we cannot tolerate this anymore because she was just uh, she was arrested she was forced to go to uh, the police car which uh, they call it mortality police and then they can kind of go they're all on the streets just going around to just find their victims who like the women who have a little bit of their hair out, they will kind of take them, force them to the car, and then later on, if they do not want to go, they push them, they will attack them, they will kick them, and then that's what happened here. She was like a new in that big city, she just went to visit in front of her uh, uh, brother, she was arrested, and then she was forced her head uh, probably uh, was hit the uh, curb of the um, basically somewhere on the street there and then uh, they took her to the car forced her with ma many many other girls so they take them to a facility that they kind of uh, give them like uh, advices yeah you have to cover and all that apparently she was already had a concussion and she uh, didn't realize it then slowly so she stand up and she collapsed and then by the time she's in the hospital she was fully basically so you could see even on the photos that she had bleeding from her uh, ears and stuff like that obviously the government wanted to say no no she had a previous heart problem so that's what they said whenever they kill somebody they will say this person had a suicide this person just you know had a health condition so anyway so it started from there but it was not before her there were so many also things happen but this one starting that day and then that's why the whole world explode by this and then since then there were so many other girls same thing so being arrested been hit and as a matter of fact, just on this weekend, my own niece got shot and um, in front of her eye, two young um, boys, uh, aged 17, 18, been uh, actually, they, 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 were, they were killed. And she called me like in a panic and then she was crying. Of course, with the internet and stuff, it's just like so hard, we had to kind of send the internet access to them and fortunately I had the chance to send her an internet access that she could just easily send information or call me. She was hiding in her apartment bathroom, De scared even to turn on the light because all her windows and the whole building was shut. It's just like you are in a war zone. like. I don't think the people understand what's going on there. Maybe they were just heard something from the news and that's it. They think that that's gone. That's nothing. But it's going on. Again, I'm just talking about 
two days ago that I was on the phone with her screaming, crying in the bathroom. I imagine how your heart is, um, thank you for sharing this, uh, that is really personal. I'm sorry for what happened to your niece. I hope that she recovers really soon. Thank you. And of course, um, being here, living this freedom that you fight for, and now you have, and looking back and see your people, your family suffering there, what would be the message that you, you wanted to share to the world right now in this moment? Um, what's happening right now, so we live here in this beautiful country. I came to Canada 32, 33 years ago. Um, I have two of my children was born here. They grown up here. They, they went to the education system here, but what they, they know that there was a price that we paid to come to this country. Nothing is for granted. Like the people here, they should know that the, the freedom that we have here, the, uh, you know, just the freedom of just walking on the street uh, and the woman without uh, anybody come to you and say, what are you wearing? Like that's a basic freedom that we have here. It's the major issue back there. And again, so people kill for that people like they don't ask anything like regardless of like the economy you know that's something that of course the poorer basically the the rich get richer there the government official get richer there again right now the talk is not about the economy and how people like a rich country like iran people are suffering there are lots of poor people there but we're just talking about basic rights so the basic rights I have here, at least, if you noted in the past every Saturday in downtown Vancouver, the people here, over 20,000 people are like on the streets protesting. Just last week, last Saturday, they were like uh, the human chain, right? All from North Vancouver, on Lionsgate, up to, you know, uh, art gallery, the art gallery. there were like yes. people and mm -hmm. I've been like all I can do right now is just go there and because we wanted to become a voice of the people in Iran and that's that's the minimum we live in this country we can do and fortunately this bring all the Iranian together that we we never seen this before I've been going protesting for everything now and then for the last 30 years in this country but this is unlike anything I've seen that in Berlin there were like over 120,000. That was unreal. So now it's like this is all pressure. So what we wanted right now in Canada from Canadian government to basically seize all the wealth of these people, the officials who send their children, grandchildren to this country, who they come actually right here in Vancouver, right here in this Westwood Plateau, on North Shore, on British properties, there are like properties bought by officials from Iran directly. So government of Canada just let all this dirty money come to this country but I'm happy right now, at least they are taking action by, I know that, so the opposition, I know that the, right now the government, so they are actually uh, doing something at least, doing uh, to just now send the list of over like a hundred of the officials, they're not welcome to this country, but that's not enough. We have to actually deport all of these people. Do we, we should not let any of these, do you know, their children, their daughters are freely in this country, go to the beaches, do you know, without any cover, but then their fathers killing the poor girls there, just showing hair. So just imagine how, how bad it is. Like just, yeah. And in, in, in all this experience, in, with all this knowledge that you have about um, living in, in Canada now, what will be the message about justice? How do you see justice for your country 
now being you Canadian, yeah. how do you like the governments, not just Canada, around the world, mm -hmm. supporting yeah. the freedom of Iran? Fortunately, I see like in many European parliaments, many uh, you know, countries, the governments, the officials, they, they all have, uh, have raised their voice, their concern about this. I, I'm so proud of all those uh, women and men in the parliaments of every country that they actually, especially in the uh, European you know, parliament, that Euro Parliament, they actually went, and they, each of them talked about Massa Amini, talked about uh, woman life freedom, which right now became a uh, became a slogan of uh, the Iranian, the freedom, yeah, yes. uh, and the freedom. Um, so uh, I just want this to be continue. My, you know, our MLA here, I'm so glad, and so they actually talked about this in the uh, House of Commons. So this is important for us. This is this support. We wanted this to be continued because we wanted to have like, obviously a, a foreign government cannot go and have a revolution and you know, in another country. We do not want that. All we want is, yes, put a pressure, you know, put more uh, like a pressure on the government of Iran because right now the people in Iran they do not want this government anymore. It's not just we push you to give us freedom. They cannot give us freedom if they kill our children. How they can give us freedom? Freedom is not something that they give us. We are taking back the country and now this is actually the, the uh, call, like, every, like in every demonstration protest in Iran Young people do not, they don't scare. Like my own niece, she doesn't scare. She's out there every night. She got shot, her car was destroyed her. But she said, we don't scare because we, we have nothing to lose. We have nothing to lose. This is a fight. We have to either win or there is nothing else. Like we have to win because if they don't win, then this government actually go after all of these. Do you know how many people they arrest? It's exactly like what happened to us. At the time, not many people were with us. At the time, it was just, uh, okay, it was like a, we, are, we were minorities maybe. But then we fight for freedom. And do you know what? I have, like, I even have a logo, like, my, this it means freedom. And this been there for many years. All my children, I have three children, they all have this logo here, freedom. And I even have this gold chain is freedom. And these are before even these things happen. I already have that because this is something that I fight for. And I'm again, just uh, one of the millions of people. So I'm just representing women. And I hope that we will find a victory and we will find justice for every single person in Iran. Thank you so much for your open um, opinion. And uh, my heart is with your country Thank and you. your family. And I am glad that you are willing to go back to that painful memories and, and even share what is happening right now. Almost, I can see that you almost cry, but you are willing to do that for the supporting your country. So my heart to all the parents and to all the younger generation that is with that beautiful ideal of justice and freedom. And I will ask for all the people that is listening all this program that don't take for granted yeah. that we have freedom and we are blessed for that. Yeah. So thank you to all of you for being with us today. And I hope that our leaders can really be more proactive in supporting yeah. freedom and justice, not just in this country. In every part of the world, we need justice and freedom. Yeah. So thank you, my friends. Thank you, Miran. Thank you very much for having me. And I really, really, truly appreciate it. I'm so grateful and thankful. Thank you. Yeah. And to you, my friends, uh, please, as Miran said, you can wear something that says freedom. 
or talk about freedom and justice and what does that mean for our society and our new generations and for the future leaders. So don't forget, be healthy, peaceful, and happy.